So let's look at a couple examples. And I often find this math is kind of hard to understand. So let's do some simple math. Let's say, and here's my month. First day of the month, 30th day of the month. Let's say there is some prepaid bill. Well, Raymond, what bill is it? Doesn't matter. All you need to know it's prepaid, which means what? It's paid before you use it. So this bill was actually paid on the first. All right. And I'm going to make it real easy math for us. And let's say that bill is $210. Well, what kind of bill is it? Doesn't matter. It's prepaid. That's all we need. Now, we're going to close this property on the 20th of the month. So what happens in a scenario where it has to be prorated is the fact that the seller owned the property, right? On the first, but he only, but he paid for 30 days of usage because the bill showed up at his house and said, hey, before you use this item, you must pay $210. So the seller prepaid the $210 for all 30 days. But he only used it 20 days. The buyer, who is going to be the new owner, used it 10 of those days. So he has to pay the seller some money because the seller needs to get reimbursed for the number of days. This is the buyer side of this chart. So the buyer is going to credit the seller 10 days of this, which is how much? $70. If that bill was $210 and it was determined that's what? $7 a day? 7 times 30 is 210. That's why I picked easy math right now. You would divide that 210 by the 30 days and go, oh, that's $7 a day. And the buyer has got to reimburse the seller for 10 days. 10 days times $7 a day is $70. So that seller gets a credit of $10. Where does that money come from? Well, there's only two people in this. I'm not going to pay it. You're not going to pay it. The title company... So the buyer has a debit of $70. So if I could wave my magic wand here for a second, and this $100,000 house, and this is the only bill, I'm waving a magic wand for a second, this is the only bill, that buyer is going to spend $100,010. 100 for the house, and he has to give the seller $10 for the last 10 days of whatever this is that the seller prepaid at the beginning of the month. And conversely, the seller is going to walk away with $100,010. That $100,000 is the credit to him for the purchase price of the house. Plus, he gets back $10 for something he's not going to use. So he is going to get a credit of $100,010. Okay? 
This is how the proration would happen for a prepaid bill. Now, I'm going to change the story because I do that all the time, right? And we have our 30 days. We've got the seller side here and the buyer side just so we can see it. And we're going to close on the 11th day. And we're going to use the same numbers just to help you out. All of a sudden now, there is an accrued bill that's due when? At the end of the month. And we are too going to make this a $210 bill, which is still that same $7 a day, just for reference, all right? But now let's talk about this. <clears throat> because it's paid at the end of the month, who is actually going to write the check? Well, at the end of the month, who is the homeowner? The buyer will write the check. So this check will get written here. And how much will that check be for? It will be for $210. The company doesn't care. All they know is whatever this is has been used this entire month and they want paid. So they are going to send the new owner on the 30th, which in this case is the buyer, a check or a bill for $210,000 or 200 <laughs> for $210, sorry, for 210. And he's going to have to pay it. But he's only used it 19 days. The seller used it the first 11 days. So he has to settle up with the buyer so that the buyer has enough money at the end of the month. How much is he going to settle up? Well, it's 11 days of usage at $7 a day. The seller is going to get debited $77 for that. And he is going to give a credit to the buyer of $77. And what the buyer will do is take that money that he received at closing and he is going to add it to his $134 that he's used, $133 which is going to add up to $210, and then he will write the check. So in this particular case, the seller gets a debit. So now, let's pretend it's a mythical $100,000 house. The buyer only has to bring $99,923. To closing because he is getting a credit of 77 that makes a hundred grand and the seller is going to walk away with ninety nine thousand two hundred and twenty three dollars because he gets a hundred for the credit of the house but he has to give back 77 for this pre uh, accrued bill whatever it is all right so there's an easy way to look at this. Here's who gets the debits and the credits. Let's look at this. You've got a prepaid and then you've got this accrued. Here's the way to remember for me. The most common way is who's writing the check. In the accrued method, the buyer's writing the check. He will get a credit at the closing table. In the prepaid, the seller wrote it at the beginning, therefore he gets the credit. See that? So now, what I just said, hint, 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 I can tell you what kind of bill it is simply based on who got the credit. 
if the seller got the credit for the money at the closing table, that's prepaid. If the buyer got the credit at the closing table, that's an accrued bill. And that's how this works. All right. And it is either added to what the debit's got to bring, or it could be subtracted because the buyer's debit is what? A hundred thousand because he's paying for it. But he gets a credit of 77 back. So the debits minus his credits, what I told you is what the buyer has to bring to the table. This is debits minus credits equal what the buyer brings. In this scenario, here are the credits, which is the price of the house minus the debit he owes. This is what the seller receives. This is simply how this is done. All right. Now I would suggest that you do some of the questions down here because there are examples to help you do this. A credit and it's all right here. Here's the arithmetic that we just went through. Now let me do one other example because I want to try and help you with a hint. This is an example of maybe where the bill was prorated over a month. There are some bills like maybe HOAs or taxes where this proration may be a year's proration. So here you have January 1 and here you have December 31. Now, I have mentioned before that this exam is designed for you to answer questions in a minute, all right, in a minute. So there may be some tricks that you need to be aware of. In an example like this, where it's a year proration, let's use the example number one. It closes on June the 30th. And the bill is $618. Well, the first thing you're going to do is panic because you're going to figure, well, dude, I don't know how many days from January the 1st to June the 30th is. How many, you got, the, what, what is that old trick about uh, September 30 days has a, a, I don't want to remember that. And I won't have a calendar but what can I recognize about June the 30th? It is half a year. So you can do the math on these exams and get very, very close by realizing that the proration on this, first of all, it's prepaid. So who's going to get the credit? Who wrote the check? The seller did. So the seller is going to get a credit and they closed at half a year. He's going to get a credit of $309 approximately. So the exam will say something like a credit of approximately 309. Now it may be $308 and 54 cents, but the exam is not going to ask you that. We just did that proration very quickly because we realized the trick on June the 30th was half a year. That is a very common trick for them. The other common trick they love to do, let's do a second example. It's going to close September 15th. Well, now you're even more confused because... I don't know how many days that is, but we realize that the 15th is half a month, right? So you've got January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, eight and a half months. This is the trick. That time frame is eight and a half months. Out of how many? Out of 12. 
Now you can figure that and go, look, it's 618 times the percentage of whatever eight and a half divided by 12 is. And you go to your Siri calculator and go, hey, Siri, what's eight and a half divided by 12? <clears throat> this is about 70% of the way through. All right. Hey, Siri, what's 70% of 618? Times 618 is 432.6. So what you get is the proration is $432.60. If it was a uh, prepaid, then the seller is going to get a credit of money. Now, what I just figured actually was how much did the seller use? The seller's going to get a credit for this amount. So I hope I didn't mislead you. Understand that this is how much the seller used, eight and a half months, 30%, 70%. So the seller will actually get a credit of 30%. Hey, Siri, what's $618 times 30%? Right? Because he used 8.5%, he gets this amount of money back. Well, if this percentage that I did the math on here was 70 then this percentage is ballpark 30. And when you take $618 times that 30%, you know the seller is going to get a credit of $185. And that debit is going to come from the buyer from that same amount because prepaid credit always goes to the seller. So if you have questions, I want you to email me on this and we can go over it. But you, that's what you really need to determine. But watch for these tricks. And most of the time, they're almost always half a month or half the year. Here, this half was 309 he used, but he still got the credit for 309 because it was half. All right. Once again, If you have questions, feel free to email me. I'm at Raymond at realuniversity.com. This was the chapter entitled the closing or the settlement. Uh, I would do some of those problems down there. If you have uh, ways, you guys can go out to chat GPT and ask questions. I actually have a handbook that I have written that will help you pass or ace the real estate exam if you want to go searching in our library of professional books that you might get that will help you build questions. I actually have the chat GPT prompts in there for you. And you may ask yourself or you may ask it to create some sample proration questions. All right. Once again, email me, Raymond at realuniversity.com. I'll see you on the next chapter.